going to try to study some this this morning in Psalms 90, page uh, Psalms 90, verse one, which is where we'll start our reading. I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible has got uh, up over that a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Right. And uh, Moses had already uh, said some, of, done some of this, or said some of this, and and I don't know how that if David had uh, more of this wrote down, or if he just sung the song that he had heard Moses, because I know uh, this 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 psalm this, this psalm was wrote down a long time ago. So maybe I, I don't understand uh, if how David if David heard it from others, it was passed on down. I, I'm sure that's the way it would. But, Anyway, we want to look at this uh, Psalm 90 this morning. In the verse, uh, chapter 1, <clears throat> thou hast, uh, verse 1, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And we have to understand what is being said here that Moses is, has, has put this meaning in, into place. And he's talking about all the different things that went on in his life. And Moses, as we know, led the children out of Egypt, and uh, he was he was uh, persecuted, and he was done every way in the world by the children of God. And so he says, "Thou has been our dwelling place in all generations." Now, I want to, uh, if you would, just a minute, if you would, turn to Deuteronomy. We want to just read just a little bit of this uh, about Moses in Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. <clears throat> Verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Now, he wrote this just prior to his death. And he said here, and he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Sarah unto them. He sinned. He sent forth, he shined forth from Mount Phabron, and he came with ten thousand of saints. From his right hand went a fiery, fiery law for him. Yea, he loved the people. All the saints are in thy hands, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded thus a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So we're seeing here that that Moses is, was right. He wrote this song, and we can we'll read a little bit more in a minute about this song. But he wrote this song in connection with the children, and he had told he called all the children or the leaders together just before he died, and he told them some of the things that was going to happen to him, uh, even that he wouldn't get to go over into the promised land. Right. We know this morning that that's one of the things he's. He's saying in the psalmist there that you've been with us from generation to generation. Well, he was with them, but the thing of it is, uh, they disobeyed God and they did everything in the world that was wrong. And he right. he sent them uh, he sent them different places, and none of them got to see the land. So uh, back in our lesson now, he says here in, in, in verse uh, the first uh, in verse one again. I want you to see something else. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And I want you to turn, if you would, to Ezekiel eleven sixteen, and we will read just a little bit there, and then we'll get back into the lesson. Ezekiel, Ezekiel eleven, verse twelve. Ezekiel eleven sixteen. I'm sorry, I thought it was right. Eleven sixteen. Notice here. Therefore said, say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathens, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the, in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus, therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel Amen. and they shall come hither and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from this from what 
of from thence, and I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony hearts out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that Amen. they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose hearts walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will rec recompense their ways upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. And this is some of the things that, that Moses was, was thinking about as he wrote this psalm, or this psalms here. He says, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And he, he concludes then that the Lord will be with them from His time until the time of the revelation. Mm -hmm. He says from generation to generation. So that covers all. So he said in verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. He, he, he compares the forming of the mountains to the nation of Israel. He says, they're going to be there from everlasting to everlasting. Like he says here, that he formed the mountains and the world even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. And so God is able this morning to do what He will. And if, uh, like we are speaking about sending the, the, the storms and all this, He has got control of them just like right. I have got control of my car going down the road. He sends them where He wants to. He tries to speak to people. A lot of times they will not listen and the people of Israel uh, wouldn't listen to Moses and Moses went right in the presence of God and he spoke to God and he, he knew what was going to happen and listen, they wouldn't listen to him. So here we see uh, in verse 3, Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men. Now, I believe what, he's, what he is referring to here is, Thou turnest man to destruction. He allowed the devil to deceive Eve and, and Adam, and he turned them to destruction. That was a destruction for all mankind, regardless of who they were. It was a destruction. So, but he says then, then he says to them, Return, you children of men and so he 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 is he has a uh, uh, made a way for children to return from this total destruction and the way of it is through Jesus Christ our Lord and listen this morning uh, as we are living in bad days we need to turn our eyes on Jesus a lot more than what we are and pay closer attention to what are, what's going on in our lives and stay as close to Him as we can because uh, the, the, uh, the time that we're living in is a time that we can, we can change things by praying. Amen. And, uh, we can change uh, uh, people's minds by praying for them. We don't have to uh, burden them with, a, 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 with a, a stick or something like that, but we can pray for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, that's... When we do that, that's all we can do, because we can't make we can't make the storm go to little break, but we can pray for it. And so here he says in verse four, for a thousand years in thy sight are as but are but as yesterday, when it is past, or as it as a watch in the night. And so uh, to to God or or to anyone that has lived a life. You know what he says here, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterdays. That's God. Amen. That's God. He I mean time does not mean anything to God as far as uh, us in in, in, in in years and all this. But he says, For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. And so we see, even in our life, uh, our childhood is, is just a, a, a passing thing in the night. We sit down sometimes and we talk to one another about, oh, when I was a child this and when I was a child that. And even when I was a young man, I did this and I did this. But listen, it's a time past. It's over with. And here 
He's saying here a thousand years is in sight, or, or but as yesterday, and it to us is a yesterday. It's something that we reminisce about sometimes, and we talk about these things, but it's past, it's gone. And it's the same way with the Lord. A thousand years is one day. And one day is a thousand years according to the Bible. So here uh, in verse in verse five, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. So he is he is still talking about uh, the time that we are living in, the time that Israel was going through. And he says, Thou carest them away with a flood. And we know this morning that uh, even as we remember the Red Sea and as the Egyptians were uh, going across the Red Sea, he carried them away with a flood. He carried he carried Israel away with a flood because he said there's not but two people that's going to live and see and go up into the into the Canaan. And so he carried them away too because of disobedience. And that's what that's that's to me is a is a good a good uh, thing that we need to think upon. That this morning is being carried away with a flood. Mm -hmm. uh, it's disobedience. It's just pure old disobedience, and that's that's all it is. So he said he said, in verse five, "Thou carest them away with the flood; they are as as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the in the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. And so that is a lifespan. Uh, that is something that that we're going to all have to uh, think about, or we're going to have to do. Right. And that is, we're we're growing grass now, but one day we'll be cut down, we'll we'll die, and we'll wither away, and we'll face the Lord. Right. And we, as God's people, need to understand uh, how great a thing that will be. And how wonderful a thing it will be! You know, we were singing those songs this morning, and uh, I just thought as I, uh, I was sitting down, I wish I could get a double portion of that. Amen. I, I mean, I, 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 I just enjoyed the song service so much this morning. The, the spirit was in so so much, and and uh, and here here we we see that uh, we're we're here now, and we're growing, and we're supposed to be green, and we're supposed to be. Uh, Doing the will of the Lord, and one day we're going to be cut down, and we're and we're and in other words, just speaking of, of, of dying. So here he says, "For we in verse seven, for we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Are we are we troubled? And so uh, if you know if we if we are disobedient children, uh, or if we are." Are people that are, are just disobedient. We are consumed, he says here, by thine anger. In other words, when God when God is angered, uh, I can remember reading there in in, uh, in, uh, in Moses about you know when when the people angered God so that he said Moses, he said, I'm going to kill them all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill them all, and uh, I'm going to raise up out of you a, a nation. Well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking about Moses uh, talking to God because he talked to him. He talked to him face to face because when he come down off of that mountain, listen, they had to put a, a veil over him because he glowed so nobody could look at him. He he was in the presence of God, and uh, I believe I believe after Moses came down and seen and the children uh, uh, dancing around that thing and all this, God spoke these words. He said, "I'll just kill them all. I'll mm -hmm. kill them all." And Moses. Moses spoke to the Lord, uh, uh, and, and you know, God said, "There's none, none no greater than Moses." But he spoke to he spoke to God and said, "God, you can't do this. You don't do this. You don't do that because uh, you sent these people out here, and now the people all around them will say, well, that's what he did. He sent them out there to let them die.'" So we see here that the, in, in this, uh, uh, he says. He he sets his he sets his wrath against us sometimes in order to bring us back to where he's uh, where he can be comfortable with us. So here he says, "For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled." And I hope this morning that uh, we don't have anybody here that's not troubled 
with God's wrath. It's not troubled about some of the things that gets in our life and some of the things that we do. Listen, we uh, this morning are just people. We're just human flesh. Right. Listen, we get out of the will of the Lord. And we need to be, when we get out of the will of the Lord, and when we get to doing things that we shouldn't do, we need to be troubled. We need to be troubled to the point where that we can't sleep and we can't eat until we get that thing straightened out. And we, we, when we get it straightened out, we should not have any intention whatsoever of it to coming up in our life again. But listen, that's what he's saying here. Here and, 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 and the, these, this, this wrath can be terrible. So uh, he says here in verse uh, 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 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secrets, sins, in the light of thy countenance. So again, here our iniquities, our evil doing before thee, our our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. And so he, he, you're not getting by. You're Amen. not getting by with anything that you do. Uh, you know, a lot of times we. Uh, we do things that we're ashamed of within us, but we're ashamed to admit it. Uh, but we need to confess our sins. Right. Uh, and, and listen, if, if we sin against a, a, a friend or a, a brother or a sister, we need to confess to them that we have sinned against them and we have uh, had evil thoughts about them because, listen, uh, that sin will come up before you again. And uh, that sin will come up in a in this life and then it'll, again, it'll come up again and when you, you stand before God it'll come up again and uh, you'll lose rewards for it uh, and if you don't do it and so I'd rather be ashamed here than to be ashamed in front of God right and uh, listen if you if your brother or sister is a brother or sister uh, they'll forgive you and they'll say well I forgive you but the thing of it is I don't I don't want to I don't have anything that I that I know of between me and God when I when I stand before Him because uh, I want I want all the rewards I get when I get there I want I, 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 I'm, I'm that way I want to be I want that because listen that's something that I can use in heaven I can use these rewards as crowns and I can lay them down at God's feet or mm -hmm. Jesus' feet and I can be I can be closer to the Lord and so here is here is some of the things here but now listen in, in verse nine. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. They, we spend our years as a tale that is told. And this is, this is, this is what I was getting back to a while ago about uh, uh, reminiscing about our lifetime and things of this nature. And we spend our life as a tale told. Uh, we spend it uh, in a way that will be revealed it will be told, I believe, it will be told again uh, when we stand before God. Uh, and so here is, here is something we need to remember. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten, which is seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score, which is eighty years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Right. Now, uh, I look forward to living every year I can. Uh, but listen, uh, you know, the thing of it is, one of these days I'm going to die. I know that. Uh, I believe that. And unless the Lord comes and takes me out to the rapture. But I want to be ready when he, when, he, when he calls me. And he says here... Uh, these, all of these, this 70 or 80 years that we'll live, uh, some of us will. But he says here, uh, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. In these 80 years, or in these 70, or in these 60s, we're going to have these sorrows, and we're going to have these problems, we're going we're to have uh, uh, trouble on every side. Because he says, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away, and right. we, as God's people, should have a desire within us to really, hey, today's the day I want to go home. Amen. I, I want to go home. I want to be. I want to go home because, hey, what have you got for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You got a schedule. Right. You've got a problem. You've got a problem. You've got a problem. 
and you've got to worry. But the thing of it is, if we are with the Lord, we won't have that. You're right. And so, uh, what I got such a blessing out of, he says, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. I can imagine, I can just imagine us uh, being called out to be with the Lord, or I can imagine closing my eyes and death and the death angel taking me and we go. Mm-hmm. We fly away. And so, it's a wonderful thing this morning to have the, have the assurance that the angel of God is going to be there for you and he's going to carry you into God's uh, into God's place. Amen. Because you know, you think about you laying down and closing your eyes and there's an angel there, but he's not a pleasant angel. And he says, all right, you, you lived your life now. And, the, and him laughing at you, you can see what you got. And it's the devil of, it's the angel of hell or angel that will lead you to hell. And listen, hey, that's where you're going to go. Or you're going to go to be with the, with the Father. And so, and soon we fly away. So, here is again, who in verse 11, who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. And so, he's, he's asking the question, Moses knowing, knowing all the fears of God, and I think that some of these words that are written down, Moses, uh, Moses told David, or told some of them, and David heard them. But he says, who knoweth the power of thine anger? And, and, and I, can, I can just see a picture of Moses standing before God and saying, who knows the power of your anger? Because uh, uh, nobody does. And uh, I believe this is what, I believe this is how that why that Moses wrote it down and why that it's written in our in our in our Bible to let us know the the terrible wrath of God and how how it can be because uh, we 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 know him as a God of love but listen he's a God of wrath also right That's what he says so here again here so in verse. Well, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And this number, our days, is to count every day as the last day of your life or the first day of your life. Listen, you need to number, you need to, you need to get up of a morning with a desire in your heart to serve the Lord. Right. You, need to, you need to make this day uh, uh, the, the only day in your life that you have anything to do. You don't need, you can't worry about where we're going to go next week or what we did last week, but just count, number our days because they're important and the things that, that God has got for us is important too. So he said, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In other words, really understand the importance of this day. Now, return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. So, here I believe is some of the things that Moses had on his mind concerning the children of Israel and, and he asked the Lord to repent that he had the, had made a desire in, to Moses that he would destroy them. But here he, he returned, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with with thy joy, with thy mercy, that we may Rejoice and be glad all our days. So, O oh, satisfy us early or in our youth with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. And so, and I, I you know, I look back at my, my younger life and I think about how I was a Christian, but I didn't enjoy it. Like, uh, I didn't know the things that I'm. Um, that the Lord has blessed me with this in my older age. Uh, it didn't mean as much. But here he said, he asked the Lord to, to satisfy us early, or I believe he's talking about in, in the young life. So, uh, you that are young, uh, younger, uh, and I think I'm, I can say that because I'm the oldest man, the oldest person in the church, but you... Try to understand what you've got. 
Right. And you've got young youth youth that you can serve the Lord with. Yeah. Because it's it's the most precious thing in this world to serve the Lord and to be happy and to and, and to have a, a good healthy body and to just be joyful. And knowing that you have a, a heavenly Father that's watching over you and that one that you can serve. Oh, satisfy us early. And then in verse 15, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. He said, make us glad of these afflictions and the years wherein we have been evil. So he said, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Make us happy. Because listen, uh, he afflicted us. And why did he afflict them? Because he loved them. Amen. That's the same way that why that we uh, discipline a child or why we tell someone uh, that they shouldn't do these things is because we love them. And that's the reason why that God afflicts the people. His people is because He loves them. And He wants them to stay in His will and close to Him as He can. And so he, she said, uh, the, the, the Bible says, Make us glad according to the days wherein Thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have been evil. So he, He's saying, Hey, Thank you, Lord, and I'm glad that you afflicted me. I'm glad that you uh, cautioned me. I'm glad that you stirred my heart. I'm glad that you saved my soul. And so that's 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 what we, we have to be glad about. So let thy works appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the works of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish it. Now, I wanted to, if I could, find it in Deuteronomy. I believe it is in Deuteronomy. I, I read that from Deuteronomy 33. 1. There was one place I wanted to read about Moses again, but I, 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 may, I may have not marked it down, but it was, might have been in Exodus. But anyway, anyway, uh, the the last bit of, of of the chapter was that uh, 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 telling how that how great a, um, a, a man Moses was, and uh, he he says there's none been any none greater than Moses, but he also said in the New Testament that uh, of the least in the heaven, least in heaven. Uh, they're, they're greater than Moses. Amen. So uh, uh, you have this this morning to look forward to that when we get there, you can have greater rewards than Moses did, even though Moses was the greatest uh, person in, in the Old Testament. But you have all these things that you can think about and, look and study on. And, and uh, hopefully this has been a, an encouragement in some way. Hopefully it's been educational in some ways. Hopefully, I've read something that will will stir uh, stir you and make you want to go back and reread it or rethink it or something. But anyway, I thank you for listening to me and I ask your uh, prayers for my continued service. Thank you.